I think that's the winner. everyone today is another magical day in central florida where we are trying a brand new restaurant david nor i have ever tried this before we're at a restaurant called burger five now in maryland one of my favorite burger spots was called five guys huge fan of it i know they have it in this area as well but burger five is one that you know we've seen every now and again and really want to try david and i decided to try and split up some of these burgers so we can give them a try the first one is breakfast all day which actually includes eggs and bacon inside the burger <laughs> i cannot wait to give this one Try. We're gonna split it up, split both of these up, and try them together. The next one's called the CEO, which actually includes Wagyu beef inside of that burger. So, so looking forward to it. In addition, we also got the fries, and the employee behind the counter recommended the urban style with that garlic aioli and Parmesan cheese. Oh my gosh, I've gotta try those. Fry time, bon appetit. Oh, that garlic aioli is so good with that. Parmesan cheese, oh, that, that's a good fry. <laughs> That's such a good fry. Not my favorite fries of all time. That still stays with, I think, Wilderness Lodge and Geyser Point. The, the sauce you go, that goes with those waffle fries, that's so difficult to beat, but these are really good. I recommend it. First up, we've got the CEO burger that we have split in half with Wagyu beef. What happens to you? I gotta tell you, for a quick service burger place, that's really good. That is really, really good. The burger is cooked a little bit more well than I would than I would want to. It's just you know, a little less than that, but I know you know how things they have to do that. The truffle oil comes out really well. The aged Swiss also comes out quite a bit. So you taste the wagyu, a lot of aged Swiss, and a tiny bit of the truffle oil. I'm getting hints of that sweetness in the jam as I get through the middle here. I'm loving this burger. I am loving it. Still making our way through that burger. Let's try the milkshake. That's a fantastic flavor Oreo milkshake right there. That is so so good. I recommend the milkshake. The burger I recommend too. I, it, th this is really good food. This is. I Again, I'm thinking of it like as a quick service. It's a fast food burger spot. It was pretty quick. That's some quality food. In terms of milkshake comparisons, I would put this up there with sci-fi. That's how good it is. It's the sweetness, the flavor, the Oreo. You can really taste it in there. Not quite as thick, but there's something to be said for that. You know, it depends on how you like your milkshake. That's so good. Something I'm also really impressed by is the bun. It's like a super flaky, soft bun. You know, you go to other fast food you know, restaurants, it's you, you get like the standard bun. This is like premium bun. Considering how good the CEO was, I'm super excited for breakfast all day. What up to you? That is up there, in my opinion, in terms of amazing burgers. The flavor is outstanding. You don't really even think of it as a burger that much just because you're getting so much of the bacon and the egg taste in there. I love it. I absolutely love it. It's amazing how you can taste the hash brown in there and there's it's like these spices to the hash brown. It's not like just like a standard hash brown. It's like a spicy hash brown. And I love, oh my gosh, I can't, I can't speak highly enough. Between the two, it depends on how I'm feeling, but it's probably gonna be this one first. This is probably gonna be like the, the initial thought will be breakfast all day, and the CEO will be like, I love that one too. David nailed it. It's the pepper flavor in the hash brown that goes so well with the bacon and the egg, and the flavor is super strong. Like you can you can taste every flavor in there, and that, that's what I'm going for, right? Then we're going for the maximum flavor. The maple syrup is subtle. It's subtle in there, but you get it at the very end of the bite, very, very end. I could get another one of these and bring it home. I'm not kidding, that's so good. Oh, it's so good. I should note that these burgers are extremely easy to eat. We, we've eaten through a whole burger between the two of us in no time, like it was so fast, worth it. Oh yeah, I, I'd come out of my way for this. Yes, I would. Coming to Burger Five today was all David's idea. So, we gotta know David's thoughts. It sounded good, I liked how it looked, and so I feel like overall we came out quite well on this one. I love the buns on those burgers. Consistency of kind of like a Hawaiian sweet bread there. The flavors on those burgers were probably one of my favorite things. You could hardly taste the burger in there. It was such a unique kind of sandwich, like a breakfast sandwich on that breakfast all day burger. I want to say maybe my favorite was the Wagyu beef burger, but the breakfast burger was really good too. Those two are both amazing. The shake is quite good too, and I love those fries. I feel like all around, great menu. Looking forward to trying more in the future. So overall, huge winner here at Burger Fi. Highly recommend it. I'd go out of my way for this one. I, I would, because literally everything we had, everything, milkshakes, fries, everything, amazing. Decided to look up the number of locations there are for Burger Fi in the country, and there are, there are plenty. There are plenty. Up and down the East Coast looks like where they are mostly, and then you've got some in the Midwest, and some in Texas, you know, a little bit, but in California, the West Coast, there's like none of them out there. So if you're coming over from the West Coast, haven't tried it before, 
Yeah, I'd try this one. And just like that, we're at the TTC. I know, quick transition just like that. But I wanted to show you a closer look at this uh, huge mountain of dirt over here. Now, if I had to guess, it's part of some larger parking lot construction, but it is an active construction site. You can see the construction vehicles moving around there. No idea, I, I don't know but we'll find out together. One of the most common questions that I've gotten in recent days, Michael, how many miles do you walk a day? <laughs> you know, walk around Disney all the time. How many miles? It varies, it really does. Looking at my phone here in the app, it, it can vary anywhere from, from like less than a mile in a day up to about 11 or 12 miles a day. On average, it looks like it's just about four, but I'm seeing some days far more than others here, like 4.3, another day is 8.6. This day is 11 right there. I'm not a doctor. I can't speak to the benefits of walking those kind of distances, and we're just walking. We're not running anywhere, but I feel like that's probably a really good thing for health, right? I mean, that, that'd be my guess. If anything, it just allows me to jump higher for those uh, slow motion jumping shots. The <laughs> just because I've been working on my calf muscles just by walking around all day. Now today I want to take some time to go over a few of those tips and tricks. We've been at Disney so many times at this point. I want to kind of compile all of the tips and tricks that I've learned for masks and all that at Walt Disney World into one video. Now the reason why I'm compiling it into one video is so that we don't have to rehash them over and over. I can just kind of give you my tips and tricks. Now the situation all around the world is evolving so quickly it'd be impossible for me to give you long-term tips for things that are happening in a specific day. So instead I'm going to focus on some of those kind of wider tips, you know, mask wearing and social distancing throughout Disney. Let's start with transportation, monorails, boats, buses, they all have those specific markers for them. So monorail, you've got one side for one group of guests, the other side for another group of guests and barriers in between. Buses can accommodate more groups of guests but separated with those kind of sheets between them or like the, the plastic between them. The boats have areas where you can and cannot sit slash stand. When I say stand I'm talking about the ferry boat here as well where they have specific green circles where you stand in the ferry boat. As you know all the parks require those park reservations and although it may be difficult to get some of them for the prime days like Labor Day or Christmas Day or Halloween usually you can find some halfway through the day that open up. At least that's the case at the time of filming. Thank you. Inside all the parks, there have been social distancing markers set up anywhere that a line is predetermined. For example, for a dining reservation or for an attraction, even inside Starbucks, there are lines where you stand. We've seen those before, but let's talk about these areas kind of in between. Main Street USA is a very large space, so guests can naturally stay separated, but there are some areas where it's got a little bit of a bottleneck and you can get a little closer as the crowds continue to grow. Please these announcements play throughout the day to Except remind guests to follow all those rules. Right. Areas that you may have used as entrances before have now been labeled as exits, so it's very important to remember to look kind of at that ground as you walk through. Kind of easy to spot right there. It's an exit, so you can only go in a different direction. Some shops like the Emporium get so popular that their line is actually outside right there. You can see the line kind of follows all the way back here just in case there's a large crowd inside. Fortunately for us today, all the doors are open and we can make our way in no problem. Cast members will ping us in to make sure they keep track of how many people are in here. Thank you. Those predetermined lines are very, very good. You stand in them and you're set to go. But some of these other areas where you kind of just go shopping, you can see it's going to be a little bit difficult. You kind of got to find the right path, the right path for you. And so if that means kind of waiting for some of these crowds to clear out and going to the right side instead whatever you feel comfortable with that's what these in-betweens are about all the standard lines the ones that are regulated super good no problems it's these other areas that you kind of have to an angle a little bit. One of the ways that I've noticed Disney helps with this is by limiting the number of people inside. So even though, you know, it feels like, oh, there's a lot of people over there, I can walk over here and I can find an open area. See how that is? Just like that. So yeah, there are areas where it's like, oh, there are a lot of people around the Halloween section because, you know, popular merchandise. But there are other areas where there's nice open space. Exits are only specific areas. And as we walk out, we can see Cavalcade. Hey, Mary Poppins, good to see you. There you go. Thank you, thank you. The uh, cavalcades are extremely popular. You can see all sorts of characters waving at you as they make their way down Main Street. Now, after a cavalcade like that, you'll see more crowds making their way down Main Street, but we can still find these areas where we can keep distance on both sides. You do have to look for them sometimes. I do want to note that. You do kind of have to go, oh, you know what? I'm going over here instead, just to kind of avoid those crowds but you definitely can. It's true that the entertainment offerings are a bit different, no doubt about it, but several of those things that we know and love are still around. Photo Pass, still up and around. They can take your photo, scan your magic band from, you know, reaching out six feet away. They, they scan it from a little bit further now, but they can do it. Taking your mask off can only be done while actively eating or drinking, 
socially distanced. So you actually have to be distanced while eating or drinking or in one of these relaxation zones. Inside, you can remove your mask and you do not have to be eating or drinking while inside of here. When it gets a little bit more crowded, they open areas like this kind of further down in the Tomorrowland Terrace. In the past, we've seen it and only the upper area right up there has been open, but now this lower area is too. You can relax inside these relaxation zones for as long as you like. There is no time limit whatsoever. And once you are seated, you can take off your mask. As others will tell you, Disney's been extremely good about enforcing those mask rules. Every so often, I will see a guest walking around without a mask on or maybe trying to drink something as they're walking. And nine times out of 10, you see a cast member kind of come up to them and very politely ask, please, if you could keep your mask over your nose and mouth at all times, greatly appreciated, and they do. In addition, for any photos that you take, selfies or otherwise, photo pass photographer or even on-ride photos, you have to have your mask on for all of them. This is a great reason to have a nice stylish mask, whatever style it may be, so that you can kind of show it off in your photo. It's important to keep your mask on at all times because if you take it off on the ride, just as an example, let's say Splash Mountain, you go down, you know, the final plunge, even just take your mask off for that one moment, it will not work because the photo will see that you're not wearing a mask and it will delete your photo. And I saw this happen. If you go behind the counter to say, hey, where's my photo? I'm looking for it. The cast member will take a look at it and say, you weren't wearing your mask, so I'm not able to sell that photo to you. So it's important, keep your mask on at all times, unless in a relaxation zone or stationary, socially distanced, eating or drinking. Now, I just saw the princesses go by. And one way that you can experience the princesses without, without being so close to the curb right there is by standing back just a bit. I could see them extremely clearly. Of course, being up front is optimal, but if you want to kind of avoid the crowds as best as possible, stand back from the from the street a little bit, or make your way towards uh, Adventureland Liberty Square. That area, really good. Now, I've got a tip for when you see walkways like this. You can see ahead of us here, it's a bit crowded. The key here is to kind of walk with the guests ahead of me. See how they're ahead of me? And they, we got some distance between us. Here, here I am, it's a wide lens. We're walking right here, guests between us. I'm just keeping at their pace. So not trying to pass them on either side. That's a great tip for kind of, you know, maintaining the distance. And if they have to slow down, I slow down too. Just like that. I feel like it's, it just makes the experience a little bit easier for everyone. Now I have a water in my hand and I want to drink it, but I, I don't feel like backing over here there's quite enough space, but there are a lot of other spaces where you can socially distance and drink water. Now, tables like these have been set out around the parks, so you know where it's a good spot to take off your mask, at least for a moment or two, to drink water or eat a quick snack while you're standing here. Again, there are tables like that where you can sit down and relax as well with a space in between. Every other table is available, but these are here too. One of the things that I've noticed is that the weekends are far, far, far busier than the weekdays. That makes a lot of sense, though, because, you know, Monday through Friday, most people are working. Weekends is their time to come to the parks. So if you live in the area, you know, weekends. Another super important tip when wearing masks, hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. I don't hydrate enough as it is, all right? So remember, extra water because, you know, breathing through a, a mask now. So super, super important, lots of water. Now, speaking of water, you want to drink it, yes, but getting it on the outside of your mask, that is a big no. We learned this the hard way just the other day when it was raining and we went on Splash Mountain and the front of my mask got absolutely drenched. Oh my gosh, my mask got soaked. That makes it a little bit more difficult. Now we learned our lesson on Splash Mountain when it was raining, so mask was already kind of wet, and <laughs> Splash came full force right in our face. The mask got soaked and it became much more difficult to breathe. In those moments, I'd probably recommend a poncho, you know, kind of like move the hood over you a little bit as you go down that splash, just to keep the mask dry. Stopped inside the Emporium here and they have some more Halloween merchandise. Most of these we have indeed seen, but take a look at these very cool witch ears. Many witch ears love those. You actually see the candy corn on top there, the bow and these kind of purple on the inside of the headband there. So cool. We saw these last year, but the Oogie Boogie Dice Sipper has returned. I'm loving those dice that he's hanging on to. We saw them not too long ago. Almost looks like a uh, bioluminescent straw. Just love it. Kind of looks like it's glowing. Just a tiny bit, even though it's not. We've seen these ceramic Mickey pumpkins before last year, but they have returned. They are back again. They're very large. You can see I can stick my whole hand in there for candy distribution. They've also got red apple cider, caramel apple cider, and spiced apple cider mixes with Minnie, Mickey, and Goofy on them. And look, we found the Halloween magic bands as well. Happy Halloween with Mickey right there. Limited release orange magic band. Love it. In addition, there's a brand new sculpture, Days Till Halloween. You can actually take those numbers out turn around like like dice a little bit and uh, have the countdown change with you mickey's all around there's mickey and minnie cauldron with a smile on it and the castle is made 
of candy corn. The other items we have seen before, I'm gonna link to that video as well so you can take a closer look at some of those with us. Now I did want to see if they have that special figment magic band back, and they do, I can see it from here. There it is, the figment slap bracelet magic band. Ah, I'm so tempted, I might, I, I, uh, maybe I will. Maybe. My thing is, I really love the standard Magic Band. I feel like it doesn't, you know, come off my wrist, but it's got the 3D fig. I mean, how do I say no to 3D figment? I was so focused on the figment slap bracelet, I missed the new one. Take a look at that mini slap bracelet. They've got the Mickey and the mini. I love it. She's got the colors. Look at the nice, like, almost rainbow colors with the uh, sun castle. There's a lollipop there. Rainbows. Looks like a unicorn there. That is great. But of all these magic bands, uh, that's, uh, I don't know, maybe. I I'm still, I, I can't decide. I gave it a tremendous amount of thought, but I'm not going to get it for one reason. It's, you see how it's raised up? We've talked about this before. It's kind of raised up there with the figment. I like it, but every time I take my backpack off, it kind of slide past my arm. And usually the magic band doesn't pop off. I mean, this one, don't think it's ever popped off and I slide my magic, my uh, backpack over my shoulder, but I feel like this would, this would hold it up. So I'm not gonna get it today. Maybe I'll change my mind one day, but not today. One day I'm probably gonna get it. I've gotten so close to getting it so many times now, I feel like it's just inevitable. Take a look at this. They brought Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway hats and ears to the Emporium. Now, if at any point during your day you feel like the crowds are a tiny bit much for you, look for kind of a quiet, isolated seating area like this one and wait for the crowds to pass. One thing that I've noticed is that they seem to come in waves. So you can find areas, you know, like this. Like this is, this is nice and quiet. That way, as you make your way out of Magic Kingdom, there's very few people. Now, if at any point during your day you feel like the crowds are a tiny bit much for your liking don't forget the resorts are here to enjoy no matter weekend weekday early morning late afternoon the resorts are relatively quiet especially when you compare them to the park now i'm glad we touched on early morning and late afternoon i want to touch back on that i've actually not been going for the opening of most of the park simply because i feel like that's when the crowds are the most intense right at opening you know before i used to love going for the opening and the rope drop and everything so much fun and we'll get back to those days we 100 we will but for now i actually like avoiding the opening a couple hours after it's been open you find a much easier uh, entry Way. The same applies for when the park is about to close. Magic Kingdom, as an example, 20, maybe 30 minutes prior to closing and 20 or 30 minutes after closing, the entire way of getting out, the, the walkway from TTC, even boarding the monorail, the departure of Magic Kingdom Park itself, there's a lot of crowds, a lot more people. So that's, that's something I would avoid as well. If you want to stay for closing, stay you know a few minutes after, let the crowds clear out and then go. Otherwise, I'd leave earlier than closing. Just my tip. Now, even though it is very unique, and there are some tips that we share that'll help you through it all, there are some other tips that I feel like will make the magic even more enhanced while you're here. One of those is the unique photos that you can take, whether it's of characters or just yourself with very low crowds. Getting those special photos may be something that lasts a lifetime, because maybe you'll never be able to get them again. Maybe, you know, after all this is said and done, there'll be no more cavalcades. I hope there are. And, you know, more than likely than not, the crowds will continue to increase. So take those photos with very few people around something unique for the future now i know i touched on it earlier but i want to mention again the park passes and there is no doubt in my mind that park passes is going to change in the future no doubt but if you're staying you know on property on disney property you're buying a ticket one of those things getting a park pass right now time of filming not difficult to do. For annual pass holders, the story is a little bit different depending on the day and the time of day that you're looking for that park pass. Sometimes they're available, sometimes they're not. Usually if you wait in the afternoon, sometimes more open up, but it really does depend. Now, when you come to Walt Disney World during this time, one of the biggest changes that you'll notice are the hours of the parks. They close much earlier than we expect. Many of them close during the daylight, like it's still light out, and the park is closed. With that in mind, they're also gonna be reducing the hours coming up in a few weeks here. So that is something that you do need to think about. The lack of fireworks is another thing. It's just, it's something that has to kind of, you know, you have to think about in advance. Are you cool with that? You know, are you feeling comfortable with that? For me, it's no problem. It's a unique experience. We're here during a unique time. We'll get back to something that we're used to in the future. I also wanna to touch on the cleaning of different ride vehicles. I have seen it done many times. It's not between every set of guests. That's important to know. So Splash Mountain, Buzz Lightyear, for example, I've seen them clean it. I've the sprays, the wipes, they, they do it. They do indeed do it. I've seen it done several times, but it's not after every single group. It's just something to keep in mind. It, I, I don't know how long the these different you know sprays last to help you know keep you safe i have no idea but i do know that there's hand sanitizer and hand washing stations all over the place hand sanitizer stations at the entrance and exit of just about every open store ride everywhere around disney they are 
they're everywhere. Now, when all this started, a lot of us thought that the character meet and greets would be something that would we would feel the most, I think. And you don't get to meet the characters in the same way. It's true. But all the parks are featuring the characters in very unique and personal ways. Every single time I see a cavalcade, I see a character on top of a castle, wherever it is on a boat at Animal Kingdom, they always, at some point during that adventure, look right at us. Just every single time, looking right at us. So in a way, in a way, it's become almost more personal. Now we had the opportunity to stay at several of the resorts during all of this time as well. And when we did, we saw the cleaning efforts. Every single time a guest cycles through, literally every surface is wiped down. We would actually walk by rooms in the cleaning process. We wouldn't disturb anyone, but we'd actually see from the outside how they were cleaning absolutely everything. And they even tell you in a little uh, kind of sticker or you know, pamphlet that's there in the room what they've cleaned. So really, they, they go above and beyond to make sure we are safe. Another thing I really do want to mention, extra masks. I highly, highly recommend you bring more than one. You're going to want at least two on you, not in the room, on you at any given time. Whether it's raining, you spill food on it, whatever it is, I recommend it. Now you know my method for holding these behind the ears is actually two rubber bands and a little twist tie in the middle. Helps a lot. They have ear savers as well, several other methods that I've seen around the parks. Even uh, sewing buttons to hats, I've seen that done. As long as it covers all the way down below your chin and up over your nose. That's the important part. You're in real good shape. It's so funny. I find myself walking from the Polynesian to the TTC so frequently now. In the past, we would, we would park at the Poly or we take the monorail back to TTC. I feel like this is such a nice walk. I'm proud of myself. I came to the Polynesian. We relaxed for a little bit. I did not have a Dole Whip. That's, that's progress. That, to me, that, that's progress. I know it's a small thing, but I don't know. It's, I feel like it has to happen. I love it when they go side by side like that. When I don't have a Dole Whip, it doesn't mean I don't want one or don't love them. You know I do. You know I do. It's me, you know, saying, not today, another day. It's one of those, it's one of those trade-offs. It's one that I am fully willing to make. Really am. Take a look at this Mickey and Minnie barrier right there. Can you see that in there? It's like the uh, older style of Mickey and Minnie. That is so, so cool. I had never, uh, I never noticed this before. One of those things to consider if you have your own car with you, coming to Walt Disney World, the trams aren't running. So, <laughs> oh, that's a far walk. It, it's far, it is far, no doubt, but it's, it's good for us. It does look like a full mile because at this point we are half a mile away from the car. Hard to imagine we walk these kind of distances just in the parking lot. Now, you know, David and I have been on the hunt for a little while for the best ice cream in the area. We've tried several items on and off property, but tonight we've got another one that we want to try friend recommended in celebration. And just like that, we're in celebration. This area built by Disney originally, it's raining just a bit out there. You can see it's a nice kind of quiet town here. I've been wanting to explore it just a bit more. You know, we're covered at the moment, so we can take this down. But they've got different, oh no, now we're not. Oh, this, this area is where we are covered, where areas where we're not. Different stores. Here, this one's called Gypsy Moon. Wow. We've also got Dazzling over here where things are dazzling. There are a lot of great looking restaurants here. There's a cafe over there, pizza store. A lot of great things to explore another day when it's not raining. We're here specifically for a certain ice cream store. The ice cream store we're stopping at today is called Kilwins. You can actually see the sign right back there. We have so many different flavors. We walked by it a little earlier. I was like, oh, we, we gotta come back. All right, here we go. I have no idea what I'm gonna get because I've never been here before. Do you have any recommendations? So this is going to be an amazing adventure. I can already tell we just spoke to the very kind employee behind the counter here. She was telling us about an amazing flavors. Apparently toasted coconut right down there and sea salt chocolate caramels, some of the best, and sea salt caramel, apparently some of the best. They also have sundaes and floats, and oh my gosh. They also have the caramel apples. Are you seeing this? Lots of caramel apples, and the M&Ms. No Mickeys on them, I know, I know. Look at this coconut turtle apple, everything peanut apple over there. Oh my gosh, apple pie, oh my goodness. This looks like fudge here. You got peanut butter, turtle, sea salt, chocolate caramel, chocolate English walnut, and more. Craziest one that I can see is that Superman back there. It looks like, I'm telling you what it looks like. It looks like Play-Doh that's been mixed up different colors. <laughs> Not kidding. There are just so many flavors. It just It's like we're stunned, like we don't know what to do. We have no idea what to do. We're just, she can put two or possibly three flavors into one dish, and that's our plan right now to split that up. Um, We'll see, we'll see what happens. I, I don't know, I don't know. Kilwins here, fantastically amazing amount of flavors. We haven't tried them yet. We've got the toasted coconut and the blueberry waffle cone. I've got the sea salt caramel 
and the other one is the banana fudge pie, I believe. So we're gonna try all four, we split them up. Here we go. Blueberry waffle cone first. That is exceptionally good. <laughs> Exceptionally good. The two flavors have definitely merged together. We got the um, waffle cone and that coconut. Both are so good. The coconut, I think, is my favorite, though. I love, oh my gosh, that's that coconut's amazing. Next flavor to try, banana fudge pie. The banana hits you first, and it's so good. The chocolate, it hits you second, and I love it. Imagine biting into one of those, you know those, um, those frozen bananas covered in chocolate? Imagine that, that flavor. That banana fudge is outstanding. That might be my favorite. I love the toast. <laughs> Coconut though, <laughs> this is also good. Last flavor, sea salt caramel. Mm, mm. I think that's the winner. Oh my gosh. It's like we went in the right order. Waffle, it's all so good. All four of those flavors that we mentioned, I can't remember them anymore. All so, so good. Super impressed. All of these flavors are mind blowing. Kill Wins just got like a, a boost <laughs> into the sky here. I, you know, I miss Ample Hills, right? I miss going to Ample Hills, thinking about Ample Hills. Knowing that this is here, Killwinds is here, that's a that is a bit of a game changer for me because it's like, okay, well, you know, lo, you know, the fountain at the dolphin. I, I got to go back to it because that's you know, we're, but we're up there. That that's where we're that's where we're at. Okay, so that's that's some amazing ice cream. Rain starting to come down here again in Florida. It's, it's Florida. It's gonna rain. You can see raining quick. I got an umbrella underneath an umbrella tape. You tell me the logic there. <laughs> Winds blowing. You get it. Killwinds though. Highly recommend it. I would get it again. I would go out of my way for this ice cream store. That is how good this is. And I will be back to try a shake or more ice cream flavors. Two thumbs up. I can't put the, uh, two, there it is. Two thumbs up, two thumbs up. It is a total downpour, complete and total downpour. And in Florida, that's seeing something. So we're trying to finish off our ice cream by the sushi spot. It's a sushi spot we wanted to try in the future. So we're, we're here. Maybe, maybe we'll try it another day because yeah, I'm still kind of full, but. It got rained on quite a bit. Most of the camera has gotten soaked here. Hopefully you can still hear me. <laughs> we're gonna eventually start making our way back to the car. That was, uh, that was so good. We'll be back, Killwinds. We'll be back. David, as we make our way out, your thoughts on Killwinds? Really amazing ice cream flavors, all those fruity deliciousness, and that salted caramel. You really can't lose it. If you're looking for a good flavor packing punch, I would definitely check out that spot. And with that, we're gonna make our way off. Thanks so much for being a part of the magic with us today. It was so much fun sharing it all with you. Until next time. Have a magical day. And see you real soon. Mm -hmm.